Do what, huh? I still didn't. Yeah, she will. Yeah. Get us turned off or something. I don't think he did. Did you have a good day? Did you have a good day? You can't hear nothing either, can you? Did you have a good day? I'm good. Amen. We're alive. We're alive. Hallelujah. Uh, I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. Just be praying. Uh, of course, we met here to pray and to preach and to sing and just have a good time in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad that even being in this old world that we can still be rejoicing in God? You know, uh, Went to the doctor today, and, and of course, I ain't, I don't know if I'm still alive or not. He ain't got all the tests back yet. You know? <laughs> but uh, just be praying. I've been really, you know, I, I it, well, life gets hard for even preachers sometimes. And, of course, Mom and Dad passed in last year and all that. I guess I tried to eat my way out of stress. And I gained a lot of weight, but... Uh, I've lost a lot now, so I'm, I'm expecting good results, you know. I'm expecting good results. No, I didn't eat no blueberries. I ain't cheating the system. <laughs> Alan, i got to tell you about this, about the head deacon now. He said, let me tell you how to beat that test. He said, get you a big old handful of blueberries about three days before you go. It'll go right downhill. Is that not right? <laughs> On blueberries. <laughs> Hell, hey, gracious, but either way. <laughs> you can tell we're Baptist. I love you all. Uh, amen, I believe that. I believe that. I believe that. If y'all didn't get that, that's good advice. If you'll drink five cups of black coffee a day, you'll live till you die. That's pretty good advice. I believe that. That's, yeah. But anyway, be, just y'all, just, just, of course, I always covet your prayers. I'll take prayers over money, you know. And uh, be, be praying uh, real quick. There was a fella 
uh, that's one of our reps that we buy our ceramic tile from, uh, he has been diagnosed with esophagus cancer. His name's Mark James, super good guy, man. He is. Uh, he goes to church up in uh, uh, Morristown, that big church on the right up there. I can't think of the name of it. Manly. Manly. He goes Manly Baptist up there, and just uh, he, you know, uh, well, uh, it's a scary thing, uh, you know. So, but but I told him we'd definitely make him a project of our prayers. So be, be, please be praying for him. And I want you to start praying now for this revival. We got a lot of people that's supposed to be there. That Monday night, we really want to pack that place. So uh, a lot of people are saying they're going to come out, and I encourage you to get uh, people to come out that's lost. That's what we want to do. We want to try to get people saved and get people reacquainted with the Lord and get them fired back up, you know, get them fired back up. So uh, just looking forward to that. Uh, of course, continue praying for church. We got the baptistry cut out, and we're, we're, we're working Ever so closer about getting all this done. I'm hoping to, well, we got to have all this done by the end of October. So, uh, so for everybody that's on the list to be baptized, just hold still. We're going to get you baptized. You'll, you'll be in the brand new baptistry. So, uh, but just continue praying for the progress of our church. We always want to keep our eyes on God. Amen. We all, we always want to be attentive and listen to the Lord. <laughs> so, someone else have a request before we go to the Lord for. Amen. Amen. Someone else. Mm. Amen. Amen. Please remember this. Someone else. Amen. 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 Remember this. Sister Donna. Amen. Amen. We we I, I appreciate that request so much. You know, we, we know we got a lot of sick but the lost. We we have got to get our eyes on the lost. Um uh, I well, we'll get into it later. Someone else. Okay, thank you, sweet. Jennifer, Jennifer, yes, yes. Someone else. Oh, mercy. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Someone else.
Amen. 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 Someone else. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Some more nails. Amen. Amen. Someone else? Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. And if he's watching, you know, he was hoping that he could get her to the tent revival. Well, now we're, we're looking for him to get her to the revival at North Hills. Amen. Amen. So you tell him, you know what, we'll, we'll be praying for that. Amen. Someone else? Bless your heart. Someone else? If not, I think it would be good we gathered into the altar. Uh, continue praying for Jennifer Harper, too. She went through surgery. Uh, Bill, uh, yeah, uh, but he, he, he went through surgery. He's doing good, I guess. Yeah, all right. <laughs> well, I, I seen that your fist wasn't bloody, so you hadn't beat him up yet. Yeah. <laughs> but, no, be praying for Brother Bill. He, he, he went through well and had a little bit of issue, not much, but. Uh, then then uh, we want to thank God, uh, I don't know if you heard or not, but Evan had a car wreck there going to school the other morning, and he got a couple of stitches, but man, I seen that picture of that car, and I mean, God was watching over that boy. Uh, so so just, just uh, not only do we want to petition God for our wants, but we want to uh, petition God and give him a little praise for looking over. Say, so wouldn't be none of us here tonight if it wasn't for the Lord looking over us. Amen. So, amen. As we, we gather in daughter, brother Frankie Phillips, will you take us to the throne of grace? Father, we come to you tonight. We're so thankful, God, for another day to be in your house. Lord, for another day, God, that we can come in and gather in your name, Lord, and worship you. God, we've heard a lot of requests tonight, Lord, a lot of sick folk, God. Lord, a lot of people with cancer, Lord. I pray, God, that your hand of healing be on them all. God, I pray tonight that you help me and my wife, Lord, that we'll always seek you, Lord, and seek what's best for your kingdom, God. And Help us, Lord, as John said, Lord. God, tonight I would that you'd put me on the decrease, Lord, and you be on the increase. God, tonight I pray, Lord, for this beautiful congregation, Lord. Lord, that you bless them, God, with what they need, Lord, for the battles they're fighting, Lord. We pray peace, Lord. We pray serenity. And we pray, God, your grace and mercy. Just let them know that it follows us all the days of our life. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for all the requests, Lord. Too many to mention them all back, Lord, but you heard every one of them, Lord. So, God, I pray tonight, Lord, that you're just your mighty hand be upon them. Oh, Lord, I pray for this church, God, that you will make us, Lord, the, a place, God, that your Holy Spirit is welcome. When people come in, they feel welcome. Hey, God, that they know, Lord, that this, this is the next step to heaven, Lord. This, this is the last rung on the, on the ladder. So, God, we just want to take time tonight to say thank you, Lord. God, as David said, I praise you, Lord, for all your benefits toward me. And Lord, help me, God, never to turn my eyes, Lord, and take my blessings for granted. Lord, I thank you for my health, and I thank you for my wife and my kids and my grandkids and my, my, my daughter-in-law and son-in-law. God, I thank you, Lord, for a great family. Thank God that you've always seen us through it all. You've seen us through it all, Lord, and God, I can never praise you enough for that. Lord, thank you. Thank you. Just help us, Lord, now to grab a hope tonight. And Lord, not by any means of this world ever let go of what you've given us. 
Jesus, I thank you for dying for me. I thank you, Lord, for taking the time to listen to me. And God is He is the night where is on, Lord. If we make it till tomorrow, Lord, well, we'll we'll praise you in the morning. But Lord, right now, I just want to thank you for what time I'm in, and that's right now. So right now, Lord, help us to worship you. Lord, we love you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, glory. Yes, thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Oh, God is so good, children. As she was singing that, and they were singing that song, I thought, you know, of times I've been in restaurants, and not many people do it, but there's a few that, and they'll recognize me as a preacher, and they'll, they'll cover my bill, you know. Of course, I'll be, you know, get ready to go, and I'll say, now, go ahead and get me my bill. I'm ready to get out of here. And they say, listen, it's done being covered. <laughs> Well, glory. That'll sink in here in about an hour. Yeah. Well, glory to God. Glory to God. I'm glad I'm saved tonight. And I tell you, I'm glad that, yeah, I'm a part of this world, but I'm glad I'm not a partaker of this world. I see what they're doing. I don't know business with that, you know. And I'm just going to, you know, I was talking to a guy down there at work, and I said, you know what? I, uh, I get, uh, get so aggravated, I'm just going to start speaking Jesus. If they're going to speak Satan, I'm going to speak Jesus. Hey, but uh, Sheila and I, we were out work today, and, and there was a fella pulled up next to us, he and I guess his girlfriend or something, and they were playing the most ungodly music I have ever heard in my life. I mean, it was saying words that our kids don't need to hear. And I know this, on, on, on the Christmas story, the little boy got some a life boy put in his mouth for him. Hey, Amen, clean his mouth up. And I thought to myself, we got words that we can't say and and now we picked up words that we you man we got a twisted generation on our hands but I as I kept thinking about that kindly said to me of course you want to get out and just smack them in the head and tell them to your Pentecostal and just laying hands on them <laughs> no but as I Listen to that, you know. I said, God, what's going on? He said, don't you worry none about it. I'm still your provider. And he said, I still love them. And, you know, it's, it's awful hard to pray. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but, you know, Bible teaches pray for enemies. And I've said this before, you know, I'll pray for them. Then I'll turn right around and say, God, I prayed. I've done what you told me, but I really don't mean that. You know, <laughs> you just deal with them, Lord. You know, me, I'd just soon shoot them with a shotgun and tell God to get the chicken pox. You know, and, but, but, but the, the world, it just, it just blowed my mind. When, when we were coming up, uh, they, they was words you, you didn't say. I mean, you, I mean, they called bad words for a reason. They were bad words. But yet, it seems like we've adopted this and we're going to put it in our everyday. And I just get aggravated with that. I mean... I don't like nobody accusing me of having sex with my mother. So you do that, you know. Yeah. But Lord is still our provider. And, and, you know, you can't help but get in the flesh when when you run into stuff like that. You can't help but get in the flesh. Uh, uh, But I said, God, what's going on? He said, don't you worry about it. Just let me provide. I'll, I'll provide the answers. I'll provide the needs. And Brother Allen, I've been studying again and again. I don't see. I can't see what's holding Christ back. I can't see it. I mean, I want you to do a Bible study. Everybody's scared to read Revelation. I can't sit here. I'm not going to go into all that tonight. If you want to do Bible study, come out on Thursday nights with us. We, we have a great time. We have some great discussions. Uh, if you come down here to argue a point, just go down there and play pinball. But, you know, we, we try to help each other in, in the Word. But if you read the book of Revelation, you'll find that the latter chapter, the third chapter, going straight into the fourth chapter of Revelation, you don't read about the church being here no more. And if you go past that, uh, and we'll see just a a piece of that tonight, and I'm not going to get into prophetic stuff, but you're going to see a piece of that tonight that the church, in my opinion, from what I understand in reading, is going to be at the presence of the Lord. And now, in the way I believe that we got the rapture of the church, and everybody says, what's, what's the second coming? They think that's the rapture. The second coming, in my belief, is, is not the rapture of the church. Okay, I believe Jesus will come back again. Now, if you don't believe that way, we're cool. Me and my pastor that I loved and admired and thought, I loved him just about that much less than I did my own daddy. Didn't see eye to eye on this topic. But I want you to see this, because the way I preach this, and when you read this, I don't want you to get confused. All right? It's got nothing to do with what millennial you are or ever how you feel. 
I love the way me and him would always talk. It don't matter what you believe in millennial. If you don't have the blood of Christ, you're going to hell. <laughs> so let's not get caught up. Uh, in other words, we're trying to swim before we ever get to the pool. All right? So, uh, but I want you to see tonight as we get in this. And as more I study and the more I've looked back and I, and I look and I see the parallels from, from the times of Abraham all the way into the times of Jesus, Jesus' death, his, his uh, ascension, his resurrection, even into the times of the interceding for the church at this present point. As I go through these, these, these things, I can't see what's holding back Jesus Christ from coming and, and rapturing the church. I don't, I don't know what's holding uh, 2 Thessalonians back. I really don't. Now, I, I'm not a scholar by no means, so that may be the reason. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm as dumb as old, old Kenny Bell's back there. You know, maybe a little dumber. You know? <laughs> well, uh, he's still making it. First day I come to this church, that boy made fun of my haircut. And I ain't sitting in this pulpit tonight if he didn't make fun of my haircut tonight. <laughs> Five dollars. <laughs> Five dollars. <you know>. No. <laughs> well, glory, let's get into the Word. But I want you to see tonight, people are going through a lot. We're going through a lot. The world's under such oppression. People's under oppression. People's kids, their, their spouses, their jobs, the families, the nation. You can't turn nothing. Man, I, you know, God bless the guys from, for, uh, that, that fights for our country. But every time you, uh, literally three straight times it was telling how our military could sue this base that had to contaminate. And if they contaminate, sure. But, you know, what they're doing, they're, that's Satan. Now, we, now let, let me tell you something. I love my military, man. Don't you say nothing about our military. I mean, them boys, you guys deserve to be sitting on thrones, in my opinion. Uh, and everybody that fought for this country. I got a nephew right now that's still in there. And so, so don't think, I, but, but what Satan's doing, he's taking all these little tactics and he's placing and implanting them things into your soul, which it leads to a point of oppression, which will drag you into a state of depression. Amen. And when you get to that point and life gets at its low and it seems like there's no one else to do, you don't know what to do, and it seems like it, maybe everything's gone, uh, what's the use? That's when God will show up. But the tactic that Satan's doing in your life right now, it's the reason you see all this on TV. That's the reason you hear this stuff on the radios and you hear this and you hear that. And they, they, Some of these doctrines that they're pre preaching out there today ain't no more than what they used to call hogwash, just a bunch of nasty water. They're, they're pleasing the men's ears. They're changing the truth of God into a lie and they're making people believe it. And They're, 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 they're blacking out everything and they're fog lamping everything and they turn worship into a concert and they'll charge you $35 to listen to it. Honey, I, I, I'm not again all that. I mean, you know, if you're going to do that, do it like they did the other day. Go down to Coliseum and tell me it's a concert. Now, I'm not again that. You, you follow the Lord. I'm not judging. I don't get into that. But what I'm trying to tell you, we have got to line ourselves up with the Word of God. The Word of God will not line itself up to your life. No matter how much, or no matter how much you negotiate it. Or no matter how many times you think, I don't think God sees a thing wrong with me doing that. Unless you can back that with Scripture. So, but I want you to see everything. Now, I'm not, I'm not picking on churches or nothing like that. I don't, because I don't believe in doing that. So please forgive me as far as that. I don't believe in judging nobody. But I'm saying that all of this stuff is brought in. It, it's thrown in a whirlwind uh, uh, of rebellion. It's thrown in a whirlwind of oppression. Uh, our nation has lived under war and rumors of war. Matthew 24 We've seen our nation in Matthew 24. He said, nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. The kingdom against kingdom is the kingdom fighting within itself. It, 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 it's, 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 in, it's a fight within itself. Look at the United States of America. Uh, I'm afraid the only thing that might fix this is war. I, I hate to say it that way, but I'm afraid that the only thing that might fix us is war. And I, the, the church has got so complacent in its... We're going to do this, we're going to do that. And what God's done, He's blessed us at every corner since our, our nation has been... And, and uh, it's, it's just life's a turmoil, ain't it? Amen, life's a turmoil, you know? But God's still our provider. Amen. And God will provide for us through it all. Amen. The Bible says to live as Christ, to die as gain. So while I'm living, I'm going to preach Christ. And I'm going to hang on to Christ. Now, I'm not going to tell you 
It's what I said Sunday. When you try to follow God with your eyes looking at the world, you're going to see nothing but impossible things. When you close your eyes and you listen to God, then that's when th- all things will come possible. Amen? But your faith, and just hitting on that just for a minute, and we're going to go through this like a, 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 a B-57. Your faith comes through Christ. He said because He is the author. You know what the author is? He's the one that created it. He authorized it. It's His manuscript. It's His sayings. It's His thoughts. And He said, then I'm going to finish this thing called faith. You know one thing that's not going to be in heaven? It's faith. We won't need it no more. So, but until we get there, we got to hang on to it. Now, here's the thing. With faith and understanding God is your provider, and let me tell you something. <laughs> I'm human. I get worried. I get scared. I get mad. I do all the things you all do. So people look at these preachers, they think, man, they just got it. Boy, I just wish I could. <laughs> uh, you, maybe you don't want to do this. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, I love it. I wouldn't trade nothing for it, man. You know, I wouldn't trade nothing for it. I mean, God has blessed us, my wife and I, and I don't, I, I mean, y'all must got down to the end of the list or the bottom of the barrel or called rent a preacher or something to get me. But what a blessing it is for me to be here tonight and to be the pastor of such wonderful people. Thank you, thank you. But what I'm getting at is, is that faith is not a magical potion. We think when we come down and we pray and you say, now God, do it, take, care, do it, take care of that, take care of that. God will take care of it. It may not be in our time and in our way and the way we need Him. And then we want it. Satan wants you to turn on God and say, will you tell me if I had faith that this would all be good? And I could say to that, young, and I could do, and God, you're just not doing anything that your word says. And I don't say, now you've got to understand, now get this, especially if you're praying for someone. That someone's got to listen to God. That someone's got to pay attention to conviction. Because that someone's going to stand in judgment for themselves. Now you continue praying for them, but sometimes we pray that God change the situation. Sometimes I pray God show them the situation they're in. Provide them with knowledge of where they're headed. I know where it's taking them. Amen? I know exactly what it's going to end up, where they're going to end up at. I know exactly. I remember when I was young and in the ministry, the first church, man, I was ready to take it. I'd been preaching maybe, what, Sheila, three years, and was right next to the church, and was following a great pastor, good sound deacons, nice church. Man, I went in there, and uh, I, I was ready to pastor. I, I was going to pastor. I was ready to, boy, I could do it. 33 years old, you know, I said, I'm the same age Jesus was, boy, I can do it. I went to my pastor, and he said, you're not ready. I said, well, you sorry, rascal? How you know I'm not ready? He said, because I've been where you're at. <laughs> and I got mad at him. And I, I, I'll hurry. I got mad at him, and when I pulled up, I told my wife, I remembered because I told him, I said, man, we got to meet early. Florida's playing Tennessee today. I'm going to take his church. I'll preach in the morning. Let's go watch the ball game. And this was, I guess, in the 90s when we had a pretty decent team. But I pull up my little old Toyota truck. I'm getting out. And I said, yeah. I was looking what I always going to do, you know. I'm a pastor. And I get God said, if you take this, I'm going to tie your legs and not. He said, you cannot take this church. You're not ready. And all I heard was Oliver Wolfenbarger's voice. You're not ready. You're not ready. You're not ready. And I got in there, and I remember Brother Al, who's the head deacon. And he looked at me, and I said, Al, I can't. They was all sitting there. And, uh, I said, I just can't do it. I'm not ready. I'm not mature enough. I'm not mature enough to pastor a church yet. And uh, he began to weep, and I began to weep because we, we had just bonded. And, uh, but I seen it was uh, some uh, 15, almost 15 years later where I pastored my first church. But God provided now, I thought evangelizing was fun. You dudes want to evangelize, man, I'll give you 10 bucks, hit the road. I don't want to do it no more. <laughs> it wore me out. While well, you are sitting here enjoying your grandkids and your kids at Christmas and Thanksgiving dinners, me and Sheila was somewhere in Scott County or somewhere preaching in a meeting. We never had the 
a whole lot after, you know, for a couple years. I love it. I still like to evangelize like I'm going to do over another day. But, but what, I, what I'm getting at, through all our troubles, especially some of you older guys, some of you younger, you're going to, you'll, when you get our age, you'll think, man, I know what the preacher's talking about. But some of you guys, has God not seen you through everything? Amen. It's been tough, and you got a few scars. I mean, I cut my arm today, and Nick's all over me. The doctor even got to looking for moles. I said, man, what the world's wrong with my moles? <laughs> I said, I've had these moles since I was a kid. <laughs> well, you won't cut my moles off for it. Everybody sees that on my neck. I love my mole on my neck. Don't stare at it. But God has always provided us with everything we need. We, we've got bumps and scrapes along the way, but God's seen us through that. So tonight, for the next five and a half minutes, I want to just go over how God has provided, and He's going to continue to provide. And get this, He will provide not only here, but throughout all eternity. Amen. Amen. If you got your Bibles real quick, go over to uh, Genesis chapter 22. Very familiar scripture. I'm going to read just a few verses here. Uh, it was um, uh, a God had came to Abraham. Uh, the, the, the word that it used in the Hebrew there, and it says, and God did tempt Abraham. In other words, he was trying Abraham. Um, have you ever been tried by God? If you ain't, you're still a baby. Yeah, you're going to go through. God, God's, yeah, God, God's going to put you through stuff. But, but he knows exactly what you can handle. But he was looking for the obedience of Abraham because he wanted Abraham, as, the, the, as these, these books were written, he, he wanted them to see that, that his promise for a Savior, for a Redeemer of his creation would come. Now can you imagine the men of the Old Testament, how they looked for that Messiah. They looked for that Messiah. All these thousands of years they're looking for a Messiah. They're looking for the Savior of the world. They were looking for one to redeem Israel. And here they don't have it. And all these years and they go by, Moses, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Esau, all, Elijah, so many great, and even the minor prophets, as they got so close to the nearing of Christ, they said, oh, we just look. They were needing that Messiah. We're needing that Savior. But what God had done, He had prepped a generation for the next generation. Amen? He had prepped, he had prepped a time for another time. Now, did he provide? Absolutely. So that's what we're going to get into tonight, just really quick. So we see that, that God told Abraham, he said, get Isaac, take him to Mount Moriah. Does anybody know what Moriah means? Mount Moriah means a place to see God. It's a place to witness God or to see God. That's what the Hebrew definition is for Mount Moriah. Alright, so you see that he said, in the second verse, he said, And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there a burnt for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. Take thy son, thy only son, who thy love. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, you see, he's prepping us for the Messiah. He's prepping us for the provider. Mount Moriah was a place. The, 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 the mountain terrain there was, was a place to see God. So we see that he, 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 he uh, gets his two servants. They, they load up the donkey. They go take all the fixings. And he goes. He gets to the bottom of the mount that God tells him to go up. And, and as he's getting ready to go up, he lays the wood on Isaac's shoulders. You know, and I've preached, I'm sure I've preached this here before. And as Isaac went carrying that up and he took the fire, I mean, he didn't have a big lighter. They had to keep fire going. And as he's going up, his son looked over. Now, we're not going to get into the scholars of this tonight, but he looked up and he said, Daddy, <laughs> I see you got the fire and I see I got the wood, but we're, <laughs> we're the sacrifice. <laughs> God said, son, don't worry about it. God will provide. Now did. Did. Now watch this. Abraham knew where the sacrifice was at. At that moment. Isaac didn't know. 
There was a time, I believe, now I don't know, this is just a Danny opinion, so don't go running and reference and putting it all over Facebook that the pastor. But I think there was a time that God said, Jesus said, I see all of this, but where's the... And he made you look over and he said, it's you. Jesus said, I'm willing to go. Let's go. I don't know. Just a thought. Now we see that Abraham took the wood upon the, the burnt offering and laid it upon his Isaac's his son and took it through the fire in his hand and the, and the knife and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Now I want you to notice tonight the lamb. The lamb. <laughs> and Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them, together, and they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar, uh, built an altar there and laid the wood in the order and, and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Now he bound him to the, to the altar. Jesus was bound to the cross. So we're seeing all these things. We're looking for a redeemer. We're looking for the something this this sacrifice that can simply take away the sins of our creation just by calling on the name of the Lord. Let me tell you something, folk. You ought to be glad you're sitting in here tonight. You need to be thanking God away more than what you're thinking Him. Because we can fall on our knees in the middle of a Walmart. We don't have to go hunt up a dove, a lamb, a goat. And we can call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And our, our, our petitions is heard. My gracious, what a great lamb He provided. That's good provision right there. And Abraham stretched forth his knife, or his hand, and took the knife to slay him. And the angel of the Lord called upon him, or into him out of heaven, and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon thy lad, the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God. Thou respects God. You respect God. Oh, you want God to provide in your life? Start respecting Him. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. Mm. You may not be liking this tonight, but I'm getting into it pretty good. Because I know God's going to provide to me, brother. No matter what goes on, no matter what happens, God will provide. I may not like what i got to go through with. Matter of fact, I may hate it. I might fall victim to it. But I know in my spirit that God is going to provide what I need. I know that without a shadow of a doubt. Now watch this. Seeing thou hast uh, not withheld thy son, thy only son, from me. He was going to give his only son that he loved. God said, don't do it, Abraham. I'm going to do it for you. I'll provide. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and he looked and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket with by his horns. A ram by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. Well, glory. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it said to this day, in the mount uh, to see the, the in the in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Jehovah Jireh, Jireh means God is my provider. Mount Moriah or Moriah Mount or the word Moriah means a place where God has been seen or a place to see God. So Honey, let me tell you something. If you're thinking God's not providing for you tonight, you're listening to a lie, that is wrong. You're here. If you're breathing, your heart's beating, you've got a pair of shoes, you've got a car out there, you're going home to eat, maybe over here to McDonald's somewhere, God has already provided more than He ever needs to provide. But more than that, He has provided you a way to heaven through His lovely Lamb called Jesus Christ. And we're going, we're going to get in and just give me just a few more minutes. But I want you to see, if you want God to provide for you, you must get your place self into a place where you can see God. You're not going to see God in places that God's not there. I remember one time I had a lady tell me, 
You say, what do you mean going to church? Yeah, you can be religious and come through them doors every time, but going to church is going to get you closer to God if you go to church for the right reason. Amen? Amen? I mean, I'm not going back to Miles. I'm not going to go to McDonald's and expect them to put me a, a Ruth Chris filet mignon on that hamburger patty. All right. So, you've got to get yourself in a place to see God in order to see God as Jehovah Jireh. See, Abraham would have never seen the provider in the way he did unless he had started with his obedience and he went to the place to see God. So first thing I want you to know tonight, if you want to see God in your life and you want God to provide in your life, like I said, God don't always provide where it's easy. Hey, hey I, I like to eat fish a little bit and he'll provide them, but man, I hate cleaning them stinking things. But God provided all right, so we see that. So we got to get uh, uh, to a place that God can provide. We see in verse 8 that God provided the lamb. We see in, 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 uh, in, in uh, verse 14 that, 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 that the ram was there as the revision. And, and uh, I want you to see one thing in verse 18. Can other people be blessed through your walk with God? Jesus walked with the Father. His obedience to the cross, to the death, to the burial, to the resurrection was a blessing. That's handed down to all people that was born and ever will be born. But look at the parallel of this. Now, won't you see God the provider? I'm hurrying. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Oh, you didn't hear that. See them big old turban wearing bunch of knuckleheads over there that's calling on Mohammed and Allah and. You are blessed. You are there because it wasn't of Muhammad. <laughs> it wasn't of Allah. And it sure wasn't of Ishmael. It was because Abraham was obedient to Yahweh and he did what he said he would do. He, he delivered to what God asked him to do. And now all nations, including this great United States of America, are blessed by one man's obedience. It's what the Bible says. So is your obedience, is your walk with God, is the provision of God, is it blessings to others? Absolutely. Do you remember that old song, Let Others See Jesus in Me? Okay, let's go. I want you to go to, uh, to, to, to Matthew 11 real quick. Matthew 11. I want, I want to read this. We're getting ready to close. David, give me a, just a few more minutes. Go ahead and get ready. I'm going to get us out of here. But I want you to see tonight, you might, it, God's not mad at you. God's not mad at you. If you, if you give re, God a reason to be mad at you, He might be mad at you. I don't know. But I don't want you to get too tore up because you think it's something's... Could you imagine what was going through Abraham's mind when he was going up that mountain? Holding his little boy, I mean, some people say maybe he was 20 years old. I don't know. Either way, it was his son. My son is always going to be my little boy. If he gets 90, the rascal weighs 240 pounds now, and he's still my little boy. And I love him with all of my heart. And as he's holding his hand, he's saying, God, I don't know if I can do this. In his mind, and you know what he was doing? He, wasn't, he was comforting his son. Son, don't worry. Oh, God's telling you not. Don't worry. I've got you covered. Now watch this. I want you to see this. Matthew 11. And I'm going to close. I'm going to close. And we're going to close in Revelation. And if you come out tomorrow night, we might pick up on a little more of this. Downstairs. Let's look at verse 8. Uh, it's, it, it's Jesus talking about John the Baptist, but I, I, I want you to see verse 8. Well, what went ye out to see a man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are kings of houses. Now watch this. But what went ye out for? To see a prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. Think about it. Think about it. Now, you've got to remember that John is one that forgive the pro great proclamation standing in the river Jordan. Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sins of the world. Behold, look on him. For this is he whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. 
Oh my goodness, people, wake up tonight. Did you take Zequel or something before you come in here? Wake up tonight. I'm trying to tell you that God will provide through all of that's going on. And I'm trust me, honey, it's probably going to get a lot worse. And your face is going to have to get a lot bigger. And no matter what happens, God will provide. He has prepared. He sent Abraham. He prepared a way for the blessings of the nations. He sent John the Baptist. He prepared a way for Jesus Christ. He sent Jesus Christ. He prepared a way for me to go to heaven. Well, we'll be going there to make a Methodist want to shout. Amen. Amen. He goes on to teach us there about the gifts. He said, if an evil man knows how to give good gifts to his kids, how much more, much more, does the Heavenly Father know to give gifts? If you ask for a stone or a piece of bread, He's not going to give you a stone. If you ask for a fish, He's not going to give you a snake. He knows what you need. He will never hoodwink you. Now in closing, I want you to go over to Revelations chapter 5. Now we remember all the way back over in Genesis with Father Abraham. Oh, Abraham, your obedience, I'm going to multiply you and thy seed. Oh, there are going to be many greats. Oh, it's through you, Abraham. Now watch this. We see that God sent His Son to die for us. Seen that in John 3, 16. We see that Jesus was obedient to the cross through the, the writings of Paul. We see that Luke, Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all witnessed the death of Christ. They witnessed the resurrection. They witnessed the power. They witnessed Him coming back. They witnessed Him being with them. They witnessed His ascension. Now, we go back to Revelation. Remember in chapter 3 of Revelation going in chapter 4, you're not going to find a church because somewhere... The church going to get out of this place. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And old John's standing there. <laughs> and maybe the church is around the throne. The Bible says there's 24 elders. Some scholars think that's the church. Some think the seven spirits left the church was, or the throne was the church. I don't know. <laughs> I just know we there. Now watch this. Therefore, being justified by faith, uh, no, I'm in Romans. Excuse me. I'm in the wrong book. I flipped to the wrong. <laughs> yeah, I bet y'all thought, my gracious. But I want you to get this. I want you to get this. I just know that you're going through a lot. And I want you to know that God's got a provision through, through it all. God has got your provision. He's got your back. He has never sold his children short. Never will he sell his children short. Matter of fact, he has abundantly blessed us. As David said, what can I render to the Lord for all his benefits toward me? And I saw in chapter 5, verse 1, and I saw in the right hand of him that sat upon the throne a book written within, and the backside sealed with seven seals. Wonder what in the world that book might have been. I got my thought on that too. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to loose or to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. Mm. Powerful book. And I wept much because no man was found worthy. To open and to read the book, neither to look their own. Now watch what the elder says to him. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Oh, don't weep, children. Why? Why do we not need to weep? Because here's what God said. Behold, look! The lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. God has provided. Now I want you to get this. And behold, and lo, in the midst of the throne and the four beasts and in the midst of the eleven or the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. Mm, come on now. There was a book that was sealed with seven seals the complete. The complete, the complete number. And from when this book was opened, 
See, it wasn't a king. It was a lamb that was worthy to open the book. John says in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Not anything that was made was made without Him. But through Him was all. And God made Him the light. And He come and He shined in the darkness. And the darkness comprehended Him not. But as many did, He gave them power. And in verse 14, He said, And the Word was made flesh. And dwelt among us. Now you say, brother, why do you preach? And why do you believe what you believe? Get a hold of this. Remember what Peter teaches you. You are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A peculiar people. Well, whoopee glory. I ain't going to look like the world. I ain't going to talk like the world. And yes, I like being a little weird to the world. Because they sure are a little weird to me. Amen. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven spirits, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth to the earth, preaching what's in the book. Preaching what's in the book. People stay with what's in the book. Hey Amen. This is what you're going to be judged by. This is what the world's going to be judged by. When them candy leg lovers of the universal junk get up there and says, well, God, they was a power. No, right here my book says, through this lamb that was slain is the only way that you're going to go to heaven. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Now it gets better if you got just another minute. Watch this. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell before the Lamb. What a worship service this becomes. Amen. Having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. Mm. What happens? And they sung a new song. I couldn't sing a lick if I had to. But whoopee glory, God's got a place for me in the choir. Amen. I'll be able to sing one of these days. Amen. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us and hast redeemed us to God. Amen. He has provided me back to the Father that created me. Well, glory to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of the every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And hath made us unto our God kings and priests. And we shall reign on the earth. Let me tell you something. All these people that's called me a Bible thumper, all these people that's called me a Jesus freak, they might come in here and cut my head off, and you might see grotesque things come out. But whoopee glory when they see me again, brother, they're going to see me as a king and a priest. Amen. God has provided for me. And God will continue to provide. Come and sing for I keep preaching. I've went long enough. If you're sitting here tonight and you think God has sold you short, you need to come there and say, God, I know you're my provider. And I'm claiming you as my provider. No matter how dark life gets, no matter how bad it looks, no matter how mean it gets, no matter how bad my bank account gets, no matter what happens, God, you will provide me through. Remember, we just read it a little bit toward the end. We're kings and priests. Amen. Amen. I know this ain't Sunday morning. But this may be our last opportunity. Amen. Quit living below your provision. Amen. It's tough. You're not going to walk through. Faith's not that magical potion. But God will strengthen you and He will provide you through it all. I guarantee you that. Through the book that the Lamb felt worthy to open. Amen. Go ahead. Son. Go ahead. Well.
I don't know of anything more fitting. Man, I tell you what, this church is more than blessed. It's more than blessed. Thank you for coming out tonight. Thank you for listening to me scream and holler for about 30 minutes. But I tell you right now, I'm going to live in the provision of the Lord. Amen. 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 Yes. Yes. Well, they're all three one. So, just amazing. It's amazing what we can find when we get into the book. And if you go on to study that, you'll see that those seven spirits... You'll find that there were some horses sent out. And they were to judge the earth. Mount Calvary. Yep, sure was. Or Sheba. But I want you to get this in closing tonight. And like I said, we might get into it a little deeper tomorrow. And it says in the book, we'll be open. And they're going to give an account from this book. In this book. So when they come to you and say, listen, I don't know about all that. Well, that's what you're going to be judged by. Amen. It's this book. This book. Why is the Old Testament in there? Because people didn't have the Messiah like we did. So we got to have that part. Now here's what's funny. The more laws and the laws of God or sex, money, and all of that carried right from here into here. So when they come up and they say, God, that you say right here in your book that you're love, and love is love. Yeah, but look right here. Let me show you what the scripture says. Unless you be born again. I loved you. Here's the problem. You didn't love me. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. I never knew you. Amen. You were never my child. Amen. You were mine, but you wasn't my child. You wasn't born again. So understand how valuable the Word of God is. It will provide for everything. I love you. Thank you for coming out. What a great time in the Lord. I enjoyed it. Yeah, and you all endured it. You did a good job. I love you. You're dismissed. Go and fear the Lord. Like I said, if you ain't doing nothing tomorrow night, come out 7 o'clock and we'll drink some coffee.